This is Apple Baseball Classics, where yesterday's stars performed through cards and dice. Classic games on our tabletops. Hi everybody, this is Appa Bryan and Appa Baseball Classics bringing to you game number eight in the Federal League season. Today's game is the Baltimore Terrapins and the Chicago Whales. The Chicago Whales were the actual champion in a very close race in 1915 Federal League play. Uh, coming into this week in the project, they are four and three. The Baltimore Terrapins are two and five. So Chicago is still competing for first place. They've won three of their last four games and Baltimore has lost three in a row. Uh, their defense will be careless uh, because they do not have a momentum coming into the game. And Chicago's defense as the home team will be alert on defense. Mike Prendergrass is starting for the Wales. 2.48 earned run average in 19.15. Vern Duncan steps into the box. Here's the first pitch of the game. Five. Ground out. One away. We are playing time travel baseball. That can be found at downygames.com. I think we'll go this route with the setup. It's kind of hard to pick up the cards off the play mat. One down. Here is Harry Swasina. Roll well, is eight off the batter's card. That is an infield pop up. Here is Steve Evans. 315 hitter in 1915. That's a nine off the batter's card. That's a first base hit of the game. One down, and Evans is at first. He is fast. There's two outs. Evans at first. He's fast. Here is Jimmy Walsh. And that's a doubles roll. Go to the arrow card, short single. To right field, first and second two outs. Otto Nabi. 11 off the pitcher card. That's a swing and a miss. Strike three. We go to the bottom of the first. No score. One last man leads off for the Chicago Wells again against uh, Won't You Come Home, Bill Bailey. 4.63 ERA for the Baltimore Terrapins. Here's a pitch to Les Mann. Five off the pitcher card is an infield pop-up. Joe Tinker from Muscatal, Kansas. Uh, a very small town, about 170 people. There was some thought about making a museum with him, but they, they have been trying to do that for about six years and it has not come come together. They have the world's largest baseball there, which was their former tower, painted into a baseball. Um, but anyway, Tinker uh, only left his first five years in that small town in Matchison County, about an hour and a half northwest of Kansas City. Pitch to Joe Tinker is a five. It's a base on balls with one out. Tinker takes first. Here's the catcher, Art Wilson. Seven off the pitcher card is a take a gamble. Runner on first, single, blooped into no man's land, shallow center field, careless. It goes into a double, second and third, because Baltimore's defense is careless. One out, and the Whales have a threat going. Here's outfielder Max Flack. Eight off the pitch card. That's the base on balls. That loads the bases. It sets up the double play. But big trouble as Bill Bailey is surrounded by Whales. Dutch is willing. Well, the better hitters for the 
Chicago Fed Federals. Uh, 286, but hits with some power. He's got a home run on his card. Here's the pitch to Zwilling, 7. That's a gamble card off the pitcher. Runner on third, high fly out. Batter earning more dollars than the must. More than one dollar and muscles pitch off the top of the wall for bases clearing bat double unless it's a choke batter. Okay, through that all that it's just a high fly out to right field. He doesn't have more than one dollar sign. And so it's caught by the right fielder. Run on third tags up and he does score and the whales take a one to nothing lead. Better is Tex Wisterzill. Wisterzill gets a five off the pitcher card. That's an infield pop up. Three outs, but the Wales score once. We go to the top of the second. Chicago one and Baltimore nothing. Mike Prendergrass uh, pitched two years for the Chicago Wales, and when the Federal League folded, he went to the Cubs and pitched two years and was traded to the Phillies in two more years. After that, he moved to. Omaha, Nebraska worked in the Falstaff Brewery, picked up ping pong, and won the 1932 Omaha City Ping Pong Championship. Yip Owen steps in the box for the Baltimore Terrapins. Nine is an infield pop-up. One down. Jack McCandless. Eleven is a swing and a miss, strike three. Two outs. Mickey Doolin. Seven off the pitcher's cards take a gamble. Nobody's on base. Batter safe at first on third baseman here, unless it's a star third baseman. He's not, so it's an E5. And Doolin is at first. Bill Bailey. Nine, it's an infield pop up. That's the end of the second inning. We are the bottom of the second, one nothing Chicago Wales. Fred Beck leaves off for the Wales. Pitch from Bailey is 11 off the pitcher card. That's a single question mark means check the left left right splits. They're both left handed, so that's going to be an out. A strikeout, one down. Raleigh Zider. Three three doubles are rolled, so that's off the batter card. Three three is a single. Okay, on that stretch symbol, I couldn't find any rules on uh, how to read the dice on the dice roll to see if he's safe or not. So I'm going to just draw a gamble card. If it's a green card, he'll be safe. Red card, he'll be out. It's a green card. He's safe, so he stretches that into a double. Raleigh Zider is at second base with one away. Here is the pitcher, Pendergrass. Eight off the batter card is a sharp ground down. Runner holds at second. Two outs. The lineup turns over, and we're back at the top for a less man. Seven off the batter cards, a slow ground out, three outs. We go to the top of the third, Chicago one, Baltimore nothing. All right, Vern Duncan leads off for the Terrapins. Seven, pitch card as a gamble card. Infield pop out. If the batter's salary is greater than the pitcher's salary, it's a single. It's not, so it's a pop up. Harry Swasina popped out his first time up. Six off the pitch card. That's a base hit for Swasina. Third hit for the Terrapins. One out and one on. Steve Evans. Eleven off the pitcher cards. A swing and a miss. Strike three. Two outs. Jimmy Walsh. Nine off the batter card. Or off the yeah, the batter card. That's going to be a chopper ground out. 
three outs. We go to the bottom of the third. Baltimore is not able to get on track. Chicago won. And the Terrapins nothing. Joe Tinker steps out of the box for the Wells. He swings from the right side. Eight of the pitcher cards, a base on balls. Tinker takes first. Slow runner here is Art Wilson. Nine off the pitch card is a swing and a miss, strike three. One down. Max Flack. Seven is a gamble card off the pitcher's side. Runner on first single, cut off nicely by the center field, throws out the runner at third. But careless equals a double. And that's so that's going to be a second and third situation because Baltimore's defense is careless. Opportunity for Dutch Willing, who has the only RBI in the game with a sacrifice to fly in the first inning. Pitch to Willing, the infield is playing in. Four off the pitcher card is a short single. And Dutch Willing gets another RBI. Here's Tex Wisterzall. 2 2 roll is off the pitcher card. Strikeout. Key strikeout for Bill Bailey. That's a third of the game for Bailey, and they couldn't come at a better time. Fred Beck, left against left. Here's the pitch. Seven off the batter card is an infield pop up. Three outs. Rails add one. We go to the top of the fourth. Two to nothing, Chicago. Otto Nobby leads off for the Terrapins. Uh, that's a leaner. I'm going to re-roll that as a foul ball. Five against a batter card. Base on balls. Nobby takes first. He's a fast runner. There's a catcher to Yip Owens. And that's a five off the batter card. Hard ground out. And against an alert defense, that's a six, four, three. Double play, two outs. Jack McCandless. Seven off the batter card is a line fly out. Three outs. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Two nothing Wales. All right, Bill Bailey is a hard throwing left hander. He returns to the mound in 1914 in the Federal League. He struck out more than one batter per inning, and that's unheard of in the 1910s. I think he's the only pitcher. That did it during that decade. He has Raleigh Zider, Mike Pendergrass, and Les Man face in the bottom of the fourth inning. Down by two. Eleven off the batter card is a base hit for Raleigh Zider. Zider is two for two in the game. Doubled and single. Here is the pitcher, Mike Prendergast. Prendergast will try to sacrifice and move the runner along. 3-3 three, three roll on the sacrifice chart is a sacrifice. No, I take that back. 3-3 three, three is batter is safe at first as the fielder's choice fails. No, it is a sacrifice. Okay, that's correct. All right. I'm totally confused. Let me read this again. That is a fielder's choice. Sacrifice. Batter safe at first as fielder's choice fails. Runner advances one base. It should say the sacrifice fails if the batter is safe at first. That was confusing. So a fielder, one out. And Iron Mike Pendergrass is the base runner at first base. Last man with right-hand side of the batter's box. Here's the pitch to last man. 21 is off the pitcher card. That's a single. Single for last man, and the runner holds it second. Joe Tinker. Tinker is 0 for 0. Two walks, but he has scored both of the Chicago runs. 6-6 six, six roll off the batter card. Sharp ground out. To the shortstop, Doolin, that's going to be a 6-4-3 inning-ending double play. We go to the top of the fifth. 
2 0 Wales. Mickey Dillon leads off for Baltimore. 11 off the batter card is a single. So the light hitting shortstop is at first, no outs, slow runner. Bill Bailey is a hitter, dangerous at bat. Six, or excuse me, five off the pitch card is a chopper ground out. On the chopper ground out, we'll draw a gamble card to see which which is out. The pitcher image, lead runner is out, so it's a fielder's choice with Bailey at first. Brings up Vern Duncan. Top of the order, he is 0 for 2. 10 off the batter cards, a base hit. First and second. Here's Harry Swasina, nine, infield pop-up. That would be an infield fly rule. Brings up Steve Evans. Five off the batter cards, a hard ground out. That ends the top of the fifth. Still 2 nothing Chicago. Catcher Art Wilson leads off for the Wales. Seven off the pitcher cards, take a gamble. Nobody's on base, so double bounces past third. I guess alert defense would be a ground out to third, but defense is careless. Being the road team on a three-game losing streak. So R. Wilson's at second. Here's Max Flack, a tough man to strike out. Five off the batter cards and infield pop up. Dutch is willing. He's had a big day, driven in both the Chicago runs with a single and a sacrifice fly. And now seven is a gamble card. Runner on second, double to left field, batter out at second, then ruled safe as the shortstop's error allows batter in the second base. A choke batter is a pop out to shortstop. Choke batter would be a symbol, thumbs down. He doesn't have that. So it's gonna be a double to left field. As the shortstop drops the ball on the tag. That makes it three to nothing Chicago. Dutch Williams having a big day. Here's Tex Wisterzill. Five on the, or seven on the batter card, slow ground out. Runner goes to third on the slow hit ball. That's two outs. First baseman, Fred Beck, seventh place hitter in the lineup. Here's the pitch. Five off the pitcher cards, that infield pop up. Three outs. It's now 3 0 Chicago Wells. All right, Jimmy Walsh leads off the top of the sixth inning for the Baltimore Terrapins. He played on the 1913 Philadelphia Athletics World Championship team. He was the only player on that squad who was not born in the United States. He was born in Ireland. Here's a pitch from Mike Pendergrass. 6-6 six, six is a double off his card. Walsh looking to get something started for his Terrapins. Here is Otto Navi. 6 off the batter card is a chopper ground out. Nobby's trying for third. Well, it, it's a pitch image card, so the lead, lead runner is out. Nobby is safe. Fielder's choice, uh, one to five. Pitcher to third base. Brings up Yip Owens. Nine off the pitcher card is an infield pop up. Two outs. And Jack McCandless. 214 hitter in 1915. 11 off the batter card is a swing and a miss strike three. We go to the bottom of the six. Mike Prendergast is shutting out the Terrapins. It's 3 0. Raleigh Zider leads off for the Wales. 11 off the pitcher card is a single. And the question mark is you check the left right switch. Zider's okay. He's right handed against the left hander, so it's a single. And Raleigh Zider is three for three on the day. Here's a pitcher, Mike Prendergast. 
All right, Mike is going to try to lay one down. That's a nine off the sacrifice chart. Sacrifice, batter out, whereas advance one base. One out. Brick by brick, it appears the Wales are building a victory here. They've got a runner in scoring position. Last man, nine off the batter card is a hard ground out. Uh, Run advances one base, two outs. Here's Joe Tinker from tiny Muscatow, Kansas. He actually uh, did most of his growing up in Kansas City and uh, played baseball on several semi pro teams and met Johnny Kling. Um, later famous catcher for the World Champion Cubs. They together played a couple of years in Kansas City, won champion, city championships, and then found themselves on the Cubs roster. The six is off the pitcher card is a high fly out. Three outs, we go to the top of the seventh inning. It's 3 nothing Wales. In other games around the league, Pittsburgh is at St. Louis, and after six innings, the Terriers lead Pittsburgh 3-2. Buffalo is at the Newark Peppers, and Newark is leaning in that game 4-2. Kansas City is at the Brooklyn Tip Tops, and they lead 5-3. Over the Tip Tops, Mike Prendergast returns to the mound. He's pitching to Mickey Doolin, who's reached by an error and singled his last time up. 6-6 six, six off the batter card. It's a base hit. This symbol means he's going to try to steal second, but with a poor lead. One through five, he's out. Six, he'll be safe. And he is thrown out trying to steal. Here's the pitcher, Bill Bailey. Five. That's a base hit. Bailey is a dangerous hitting pitcher. Run at first. Vern Duncan. 11 off the batter card. That's a short single. Runner goes to second, so he can't try to steal. First and second. One down. Harry Swasina. Seven off the pitcher card is a gamble card. Runner at second. We read ground ball to second base. He throws the third base too late. Batter safe at first on the fielder's choice. Unless alert man out at third. He has alert defense of their home team. So four to five. The runner at second is Bailey. Out. Swasin is at first with the fielder's choice and Duncan goes to second. Two outs. So we've got the Steve Evans to get something out of this inning for the Turtles. Here's a pitch to Steve Evans. Seven off the batter card is a slow ground out. That's it for the threat. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Still three to nothing, Chicago Wales. All right, R. Wilson leads off for the Wales. He was 14 year major leaguer, uh, starter in 1914 and 15 for the Wales, then went to the Cubs. He was mostly a backup catcher. During his major league career, he's the man that hit the first home run in Wrigley Field off Chief Wilson of the Kansas City Packers. Here's the pitch to Art Wilson. Uh, seven off the, let's see, no, my, uh, eight off the pit, pitcher cards, a walk. Wilson throws away the bat and trusts the first. He's a fast running catcher at first base. Here's a tough man to strike out, Max Flack. Seven off the batter cards, a chopper ground out. Draw a gamble card to see if the lead runner is out or the trailing runner. It is the trailing runner out. So the runner goes to second. They'll bring up the red hot Betts is willing, who is two for two and driven in all three runs in the game. Nine off the pitch cards, a swing and a miss, strike three. Two outs. Tex Wisterzell. 
seven off the pitch card is a gamble. Runner on second, sharp ground out to third, clutch batter, double into the corner. He is not a clutch batter, so it's a ground out. Three outs, we go to the top of the eighth. Three nothing Wales. Okay, Jimmy Walsh steps into the box. The alert goes back to the defense goes back to alert as the home team is out there. Wales up by three. All right, three is the roll to batter's card. It is going to be a base on balls for Jimmy Walsh. He can try to steal second. The plus sign means one through five, he'll be safe. And he is safe on the stolen base. The Irishman is two for three and has a stolen base now. Here is Otto Nobby. No outs. We're in scoring position. Seven, or excuse me, eight off the pitch card is a slow ground out. Runner goes to third. Here's the catcher, Yip Owens, righty against, righty against righty. Eight off the uh, batter card is a high fly out. Careless defense, the runner scores from third, but they're not careless. Two down. Jack McCandles. Ten off the batter card. That's a single, and that gets the run home and breaks the sh shutout. RBI for McCandless, and he can steal second if, unless he rolls a six. He is barely safe. Terrapins have two stolen bases in the inning. They're down by two runs. Here's a shortstop, Mickey Doolin. Eight off the pitcher card. They slow ground down. Three outs. But Baltimore gets on the board. It's Chicago three, Terrapins one. Fred Beck leads off for the Wales. Eight off the pitcher card is a base on balls. Here's Raleigh Zider, three for three in the game. Doubles. Off the pitcher card is a walk. All right, printer guess has been budding all day long. No reason to change our minds now. Uh, six is a pop out to the catcher. Man on first is caught napping out for a double play. So that's a two, two to three. Suddenly there's two outs. Runner on second. Last man. All right, that's a tough name. Less Man, I think if I were Less Man, I might change my name to More Man, uh, who was, by the way, the name of my football coach is in, in high school. His name was Mormon. Um, uh, actually, Moman. Uh, seven is a batter card, is a ground out to the third baseman that ends the inning. Five to three. Yes, we go to the top of the ninth, three to one Wales. All right, Baltimore will pitch it for the pitcher Bill Bailey, who did not pitch badly today. He held the Wales the three runs, but the Terrapins need base runners down by two. They're gonna send up Guy Zen, an outfielder, to pitch it for the pitcher. He's a 269 hitter, left-hander working against the right-handed printer grants. Uh, eight off the pitcher card is a slow ground out, one away. Vern Duncan comes to bat. Nine off the pitcher cards of infield pop up. Two outs. Last chance for the Baltimore Terrapins. They're right. They will fall at two and six, and the Wells will go to five and three. Uh, eight off the pitcher card is a slow ground out. That's the final out. We go to the wrap up in just a moment. All right, the line score for today's game. Goes as follows. Baltimore scored one run on 10 hits and they committed one error. Chicago had three runs on eight hits and committed no errors. The winning pitcher was Mike Prendergrass. Nine innings pitch, one earned run. And Bill Bailey is the loser. Eight innings pitch, he gave up three earned runs. There were no home runs in the game. And Dutch is willing is the star of the game, driving on all three Chicago runs. He was two for three with a single and a double. Also, a sacrifice fly. I think I'm ready now to give a review 
of the game that we've been using, Time Travel Baseball. I think it's a very interesting game. Uh, there's a lot of good aspects to it. I like um, the flavor of the gamble cards and uh, how the flashcards are rated. Um, and then you have these uh, extra cards that came with the 1915 season, fired up, legging it out, the heckler, heckler. We never did draw the legging it out one. Angered umpire we drew a couple times, and the spitball we drew once or twice. So I liked that aspect of the game. Um, I think it's fairly accurate as the Federal League season is breaking down about the way it did in the in real life. The in fact, as it is, the Chicago Wells are in first place, just barely, followed by the Newark Peppers, the St. Louis Terriers, Kansas City Packers, and the Brooklyn Tip Tops. They were all five and three so far, and Pittsburgh is four and four. Buffalo is, uh, excuse me, Baltimore is two and six. They're in seventh place, and then the Buffalo Blues or Bisons, as they were sometimes called, in eighth place at one and seven. So that's about how the season played out. But I, I'm having a difficult time broadcasting these games uh, with the, the flow of things. Uh, uh, by the way, the game does flow when you're playing it by yourself. I think it flows fine. I had some questions about whether there's enough errors in the game. There were a lot of errors in dead ball baseball. Average about three errors per game, per team, uh, for five you know five or six errors in total in actual dead ball baseball. But I'm only getting I only had one game that had more than one error, and most of them just had an error. So I don't think that's accurately portray, portrayed as far as that goes. Um, I did get the feel of dead ball baseball with uh, some of the things on the gamble cards. But uh, bottom line is I don't like to bash anybody's game, and I do think this is a good game, and I enjoy playing it more offline, off broadcasting, than I do broadcasting it. But it's just generally not my cup of tea. I still like APA the best, you know, and then there's other great games as far as Fall that goes. Fall Classic's a great game. Um, payoff Pitch Baseball is a great game. Stratomatic Baseball is a great game. And those in my mind, are the four top games. And somebody else might have, you know, Pine Tar up there. Um, they might have Replay or Inside Baseball in those games. I'm not familiar with Replay. I've not played it. And I'm not familiar with, um, I think it's called Inside Baseball. I don't like uh, History Maker Baseball. I do like the, the quick game. But, you know, History Maker Baseball is not my cup of tea either. I like I like numbers and hard percentages and stats. So um, those are, in my mind, my four favorite games are the ones I listed. Uh, APA, of course, and then Stratomatic, Fall Classic, and Payoff Pitch Baseball. I think those four are just top-of-the-line games, and I'm not sure which one I like the best after APA amongst those other three. So I think I'm going to abort the schedule. I'll probably roll out the rest of the schedule. We're more than halfway through just to see who wins the championship using History Maker Baseball with um, their quick play game. But as far as putting more of the time travel baseball online, I think I'm pretty much done with that. On time travel baseball, also with the basic game, you get an interesting little deal where you have Players from uh, six championship, six core players with championship teams, and then you get their managers, and you get um, rules specific to each manager, and then you draft the rest of the players. This game also has rules for dra good rules for drafting teams based on money, where you get $25 million, million dollars per team, and uh, with your starting lineup. Each card has a dollar symbol at the bottom, which stands for a million 
like a Steve Evans would cost you two million. I think you're allowed nine million per starters. So you'd have to have some players if you got a, a double one. You'd have to have some players that are free, and it's the ones with no dollar sign at the bottom of the card. So that you can go that route with this game. There's a very flexible game. And you have three levels of play. You have basic, master, and advanced. I didn't do advanced on the channel. And ended up doing, um, no, I did advanced. Master is the top level game, the hardest level. I did not do the master game. But I did the advanced with some elements of the basic game. Um, the only thing I'm not, one thing I'm not comfortable with is the general descriptions of where the plays go as far as chop, chopper ground out and infield pop or line fly out. I'd rather know who the fielder is. And that's just a broadcast. I don't care when I'm rolling the game offline. But when I'm broadcasting, I want to know where the play is so I can give some kind of description on the play. And you can't do that with this game. So that's why I don't think I'll put any more of these games online. Otherwise, I think it's a good game. But not my cup of tea. Thanks for watching. We're going to start a new um, project. Not tomorrow. I'll take tomorrow to nail down exactly what I want to do next. And um, we'll go from there with a the game going up on Wednesday. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and may God bless.